Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at these GetTuber end screens that you can get from FX Factory. And these plugins on FX Factory, you can always install the demo of those plugins to kind of see if they work with your videos before you actually go ahead and buy them, which is a really nice feature of the FX Factory store. So we're going to jump in and have a look at how we control these end screens, have a look at how we can control the color, give some tips for working with drop zones that will be useful for the end screens plugin, also other plugins where you have drop zones that you're dropping video or graphics into. These end screens are really nice. I know that it takes a lot of time to kind of animate your own end screens. So having this kind of nice package of end screens that you can use for your YouTube channel to really get people clicking and moving on to the, the next video to kind of grow your channel is going to be really useful for a lot of people. So we're going to jump in here to a time that I've made ready just with a few clips on it. So basically to get the end screens we are going to come up to our titles and generators up at the top left. If you don't see your titles and generators you may be in the library tab here. You just want to click across to this little button and that will show you at the top your titles which is where the GetTuber end screens are. So we'll scroll down and it's under this Polaric Get End Screens. So Polaric is the name of the creator that makes these end screens. And we're going to begin with the shrink left end screen here. So we'll just highlight this and drag it down to our timeline. And I'm going to do Shift and Z just so we can see the whole timeline there. And then we'll play this through. So you can see we have some nice placeholders for different elements that we're going to drop in there and we're going to have a look through all of those. Now the first thing with our end screens here is that there's two ways in which we can transition to them. The first is by having it on the main storyline. So you can see we jump from our video straight into the end screen animation. But actually if we take this end screen and drop it up over the top of this video and we'll push this just a little bit to the right going to stretch this video out a bit and once we've got it up on the layer above you can see that that video will actually animate into our end screen which I think is a super cool feature of this end screen so it's going to transition into the the video that we'll then put into this drop zone so we'll just move to towards the end of this animation and we'll come back up to our library at the top left and we're going to drop another video down the timeline we'll find a second swimming video here I'll drop this underneath and you can see that the animation continues there over the top of those two videos. So you've got to get a video that kind of works nicely in there. And then we move to this drop zone, which is going to be the drop zone for our kind of play next video. So to get that in there, so we've got our two videos underneath here. We'll select our end screen and then we'll come up to our inspector at the top right here. Now, if you don't see your inspector, just go to window, show in workspace and make sure the inspector is checked here. So once that's checked, we will come across the right and we're looking at a few different things here. So we'll come back to the color palette in a minute and we've got our different drop zones. We've got the drop zone for our subscribe options. So here we've got some different options and then we've got our video playlist one drop zone, which is the one we want to look at right here. And I'm going to click here and it's going to bring the source clip option up here. I'm going to select this image of the cars here. This will be our next video. I'm going to select towards the beginning of this video and that red line that we see here is where the video is going to start. I'll hit apply clip and so now when we come down to our timeline we'll come back to the beginning here and play this through and you can see we get this nice transition to the video that will be our kind of watch next video. Let's come and have a look at a couple other things here. I actually need to fix my drop zone element here so actually it's stopping part way through and the reason for that I think is that I actually need to select the whole clip and then we'll actually come back to the beginning of my animation here and we'll re-add that drop zone. So we'll click here again and we've got our clip across here selected. I'm going to apply that and we'll just check that that is playing all the way through. Perfect. So we'll move on now. We're just going to come to the end of our animation somewhere in the middle here. And we're going to then go ahead and modify a couple of these other elements. So I've got some graphics and photos in here, my logo and a nice little portrait of myself. And we're going to use those in these other parts of this on the right hand side. So we'll select the shrink left option and we'll scroll down. 
and then we have a drop zone for the logo so we'll do that one first so we'll click here and actually you can see before we click we can turn the logo off and on so if we don't have a logo to use we can ignore this one just by disabling it unchecking that checkbox so we'll click here to add a logo so we'll select my logo from here it's a png image with some transparency which is going to come through nicely into here so we'll just apply this straight away so you can see we have the the logo up there and then if we select this again you can see scrolling down to the logo information again you can see here we have some options for the cropping scale for the logo scale so we can increase the size of this or decrease it and we can also reposition it so we've got x and y coordinates as well here if we click on hold on one of these numbers so the y position you can see we can bring that up or down and get that in exactly the right spot where we want it we can also change the color here as well so at the moment we're using the the light color option but then we can also use things like our special colors so the special color if we come ahead here after the logo animation is finished so the special color one I think is our blue here, which is why our logo has become invisible a little bit. If we select special color two, then we'll get that pink. You can see we've got some logo opacity there as well. We can use the original color of our logo. So if we don't want to vary from the logo color, our branding, then we can keep that original logo color. Mine is a kind of a transparent, almost like a rubber stamp. So I'm going to keep this as the original color, which is kind of black. We've got a little bit of opacity in there. We can darken it up or leave it lighter and then we will scroll so we have an option to pop in an image here so if i click in here we can grab an image that's going to pop it in that circle so we've got a nice little portrait there so once we pop the portrait in there then we can come down here and we can actually reposition that so we can change the cropping scale if we want a nice bigger version of that photo or we can scale it down We'll leave it somewhere around 107%. I'm gonna pan it across a little bit so it's not dead center. And then we will pan it up a little bit as well, just so we get a bit more shoulder in there rather than just my neck. So that's looking pretty good. So we can modify all these images. We can replace them with video. We can also change these special colors as well. So this is a nice feature here. We can select our colors by dropping down the color menu and just kind of scrolling around until we find a color that we like or if we're planning out our videos a bit more then we may already have saved some color swatches for other things i know i have so i can click on this color box and that will give me my color swatches for the mac so basically these colors are all ones that i've saved for different videos that i'm working with so if i select my orange here then it will add that special color too as my orange and i can click on the blue and then we can also modify that to another color. So we could go for an orange, we could go for a red, we could go for a kind of slightly different tone of orange, um, or even similar orange and then just kind of darken it down. Actually, I think we should do the reverse of that. I think we should have the bright orange there. And then for special color two, we'll actually darken this down a bit so we get that nice juxtaposition between those two lighter and darker parts of the image. Then we can close this color window you can see we've also got the the dark colors here so this is things like our type and our light colors is the type up at the top right so sometimes when you're modifying your type color you will find it in the text inspector but for this particular plugin you'll find all those colors that you can change in here in the color palette so we're kind of controlling everything throughout there so for instance if we click on the darker color we could change it as well to a different color so i've got kind of nice dark rich blue there which is going to complement that orange a little bit so if we scroll down a bit more here we'll have a look at some of these other options that we have so we have the subscribe text so for instance subscribe to this channel i might change it to subscribe to my channel and we've got and stay tuned we'll change this to stay tuned for the next tutorial and again you can see you can change all these colors from the colors that we set up there. And then we've got our bell icon. We can change the color of that as well. We can also scale it. We'll kind of leave that as is. And then we have our video one special color. So this is our watch next option here. So we can change that to a dark color or keep it as our special color two. 
or change it to our special color one. And that looks quite nice, so we'll leave it at that. Then we've got the, the logo, which just looks black because it's that transparent PNG. We've already changed that and kind of modified that, modified the color. And then we have our social links as well. So if you don't have social links, you can uncheck this and it will turn them all off. So you've got a nice level of control of being able to include these or not include these. And then if we scroll down, you can see we can show or hide the individual icons. So we're showing all of them or hiding them all. And then we've got icons for Instagram, or we can set it to none. So for instance, if you're leaving a web link or something like that, you might not want an icon for that. And um, we'll leave this as Instagram. We can change this to my Instagram. Scroll down a bit more. I don't really have a, a WhatsApp that I would share with everyone, so I'm gonna change this one to Facebook. And we'll do uh, Facebook. We'll do a facebook.com slash Ben Housel. And we can move these as well. So we can modify the X and Y position of our links. You can see it's moving the, the icon. Um, so if we scroll down here, this last Facebook option we don't need. So I just need the Instagram and the Facebook there. So I'll change this to none. And then I'm gonna remove that type, just delete it. And then we just have our two follow links down there at the bottom. And then we have an optional title. So this is the title for that kind of social media section, the follow section, and we can have a follow me. And then if we scroll down, we've got an optional line here as well, which we can use. Um, we can offset that line. So we can change kind of where that line sits on the Y axis. So we could actually bring that down and then we could bring it to the left, so it's underneath those two. And then we've also got some other options down here for things like the, the line rotations and stuff like that, which we don't need to modify. So you can see through all these different settings, we have some real nice options for the GetTuber end screens. Lots of different options that we can change. We have some other drop zones for social media icons if we want to use our own. And if you've got your own icons you want to use there. But for the moment, that is a kind of pretty detailed overview of the different controls. And once you look at some of the other GetTuber end screens in here, then you'll see that those settings and the setup of them is very similar. So you've got those drop zones, those different elements, and works really nicely as you're trying to build those end screens quickly in Final Cut Pro. So let's come down and play our end screen. So you can see super nice smooth flow between our videos on the main storyline and then the video that we've dropped into our drop zone there that would be our kind of watch next video. So we could also drop in a thumbnail for a video in there as well. Now if you have any questions about the GetTuber end screens then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.